Hey folks, hope you guys are all having a great day. Today's Tool Talk topic is routers. And the whole point of this Tool Talk series is to build up a library of answers for the commonly asked questions that I get about my tools. So let's talk routers today. I've got a couple of laminate routers or trim routers, palm routers, whatever you want to call them, smaller routers, and then a couple of larger routers for plunge bases and router lifts and router tables and such. So I'll try and compare them as they kind of compare to each other and similarities for sizes and whatnot. So these two smaller routers, I bought each one of these for CNC use and <clears throat> the Bosch Colt I bought for the Shea Poco 2 that I had and I ended up getting rid of the Shea Poco 2. This uh, DWP611 DeWalt router I bought for the X-Carve CNC machine I ended up getting rid of the X-Carve CNC machine. So I've got both of these for use here in the shop. Uh, what I like, what I don't like, what I buy them again kind of thing. So uh, the Bosch Colt, the things that I like about it is the palm grip. That's kind of handy and, and just it, it fits your hand as you're using it. I really like that. It's more ergonomically friendly. Um, but I always tend to use my other hand to push down at the base. So there's no reason why I couldn't do the same thing with the other one. However, this does feel really comfortable in your hand. I also like the fact that this Bosch Colt came with an edge guide attachment. Now this black thing you see here is a shop vac attachment that I hot glued to it so that I can get dust collection with the edge guide attachment. Now the attachment, like I said, came with this. That's uh, pretty nice. Uh, from, If I'm not mistaken, from all I can find online and locally, uh, the Colt is like 20 bucks less expensive on average than the DWP 611. Um, I like those two things about the Bosch Colt. The only thing that I prefer on this one over this uh, is how easy this is to adjust your depth. Uh, once you unlock it, you just spin this ring and your depth adjustment is done as needed. And then you can just clamp these two, uh, undo these two clips here to completely remove it from the base. So that's very quick and very easy to adjust. This one, it's not you know horrible, but it's it's not as convenient. There's a little knob back here. You have to have the, the router twisted clockwise into the base in order for the threads to engage on this depth adjustment. And then you can unlock it by twisting it counterclockwise if you're looking down from the top. And then twist it some more and release it. It's just not as, I mean, it's not difficult to use, but it's not as, not as fluid and easy as this one is. So that's the only thing I'd give this one the advantage of. Oh, and also Another small little thing, the base here, the, the, the metal base that th this one comes with, it's got a plastic guide or plastic sub base on the bottom, which you could put a plastic one in here too, a clear plastic. But there's less metal in the way, so you have a lot of visibility onto your workpiece, a lot more visibility than what you have on here. But as far as which one would I buy if I had to replace them or buy another one tomorrow, I'd probably go with the Colt. It's about $20 less expensive, comes with the edge guide, I like that. As far as the performance from each one, they both, in my opinion, do the exact same thing. So performance doesn't really matter to me. I haven't had each one of them that long. I think that I've had this one for going on two years now and this one for a few months. So as far as longevity, who knows? But I'd probably get the Colt going forward. Next up in size, I have this uh, Drill Master 2 horsepower fixed base router. And I don't know what happened to the fixed base. I think I lost it during the move uh, into this shop. But uh, from what I recall, from what I remember, it felt awkward to use. I think it was a little top heavy. Um, so I've never used it with the base much at all. And this has always been used for me in a router table. Now the reason why I got this is from Harbor Freight. This was $50 when I purchased it, $49.99 when I purchased it, and then I had a 20% off coupon. So for like $40, I got a decent sized two horsepower motor for a router lift, dedicated router table. And that's what I used it for for the longest time. And it does a great job. So uh, if you're just looking for an inexpensive router table motor, um, Harbor Freight's got these Drill Master routers that fit the bill in my opinion. Now I haven't measured a run out or anything like that because you put a roundover bit in it and you make a roundover on the side of a piece of material and if there's no problems then you don't investigate all the subtleties. So this did the job for me just fine. If I was going to be using this as a handheld router for long term use in the shop, probably wouldn't go this particular route because I remember the base being a little awkward. Alright, next up is a good, I guess, A, B comparison of two different plunge base or uh, plunge router kits. I've got the, 
I don't know the exact model numbers off the top of my head, but I'll put them on the screen. I've got the Bosch plunge base kit that I picked up at Lowe's, plunge base, fixed base, and router that I picked up at Lowe's personally. And then I've got a, uh, the Milwaukee version of a plunge base and fixed base kit uh, that I picked up from Milwaukee. So I purchased this Bosch kit with my own money, very disappointed with the plunge base in it. And I'll get into that in just a second. And then I got this uh, free from Milwaukee. Uh, so let's get into all the little things that I do and do not like about them. The things that I like better on each, and, and I'm comparing these as like a good A-B comparison because out of the box, they're about the same price. If I'm not mistaken, I paid $220 something dollars for the Bosch kit at Lowe's, and then I found this one online at, uh, I think it was toolbarn.com for $220, so it's about the exact same price. Um, Let's see, what I like about each one, the depth stop on the Milwaukee is way better. The Bosch has got this, just a little locking pin that you can adjust manually up and down. And then this, you know, the normal turret style down here. It works, that's no problem. But this one's better. It's got a, a, a quick adjustment and then also a fine adjustment here at the top that you can dial it in for very small increments. I like that it's nice and fluid and it works really well. Let's see, I like the, on the Milwaukee also, the palm, the, the fixed base parts of this one. This is the Bosch fixed base. This is the Milwaukee fixed base and the Milwaukee's got a nice handy palm grip to one side and it's left-handed or right-handed. You can change the strap to either side for left-handed use or right-handed use depending on which one which, you know, if you're left-handed or right-handed. Uh, it's, it's, it's a neat little thing to have, but it's kind of useless in my opinion because if I'm going to, I'm not going to be using this big router as a, you know, for edge-guided treatment like that. I'm going to be using something that's a little bit lighter and easier to manage. So it's nice, and if, the, if you only want one router in your shop, then, hey, that's great, but I'll never use this particular feature. I don't think I will anyway. I've used it a couple times just to play around with it and, and see if I like it, which I do like it, but... I don't see it being practical in my shop. Um, something that I hate with this Bosch is there's there's no accessories that come with it. Now the Milwaukee comes with a, uh, for the plunge base, it comes with a um, dust collection attachment. On, on this one, you have to purchase the extra dust collection attachments to it. Also what you have to purchase is, uh, I, I found these Bosch template guide kits uh, for this particular router and apparently I didn't do my research enough because this Bosch kit won't work with this Bosch plunge base unless you also purchase separately this Bosch adapter for their own product to work on their own product which is kind of like you buy this then you have to buy this then you have to buy this then you have to buy this don't really care for that so I had to purchase an adapter with the bushings to be used on their own product didn't really care for that and then I bought their edge guide attachment, which seems to work just fine. Not really any complaints with it. It seems like it's made pretty well. However, it, I think it was a wasted expense because shortly after buying that, I ended up making a an edge guide attachment for basically free out of scraps and some small hardware that I had already in the shop. So this is universal and it can go on the bottom of any one of these routers. This is not universal and it can only, to my knowledge, go on to the Bosch plunge base uh, for the Bosch plunge base. So it's kind of like nickeled and dimed myself and invested a little bit more than what I should have in this particular setup only to not be happy with the way it works because of their plunge base. I have used this plunge base on three or four projects before I figured out how bad it was messed up in this right, uh, let's see, if I'm using it, it is on my right hand side, this right turret. I don't know if you can hear this, but this particular right shaft over here, it's got like a sixteenth of an inch of play or wiggle back and forth. So if you're trying to make any type of precision plunges with these guide bushings, well, the bit is going to be moving around inside the guide bushing. And it wasn't until I put these guide bushings on that I figured out that that was a problem. Like I said, I've only used it like three or four times before noticing it. And there's absolutely no way that using it just a couple times caused that damage. So I don't know what happened or if I just got a lemon or what, but I'm not happy with it. And then of course I can either replace this with another 
plunge base, which is like $100, or pay to have it shipped to Bosch to figure out what's wrong with it and they'll replace it or whatever. And I'm just not happy with the whole situation. So this whole Bosch kit, I'm giving away to somebody local and I'll count my losses on it and he can take it and do with it as he pleases. So going forward, I'm just gonna be using this one. So it's a good comparison. This was given to me for free, like I said, and I'm gonna give this away to, for, to, for, to somebody else for free. And I've got way more invested in this than what the value of this is. Um, if I was to go forward and buy another one, it would definitely be this one, not this kit, simply because this problem makes this particular plunge base useless. And then also, I think I just skipped over that. Yeah, these handles flex quite a bit. It's, it's more of a personal preference than anything, but these, these don't feel that solid as I'm using it. And these feel a heck of a lot more solid as I'm using it. So this one just feels like it's overall a better machine than or better plunge base than this. Um, like I said, going forward, I'd probably buy this, but I wish they would sell just the, uh, or maybe they do and I just haven't even picked it up, but uh, just the plunge base with the router. Um, I don't necessarily need these fixed bases because everything that I would use these fixed bases for, I'll just use my much smaller and manageable laminate routers. So again, with these tool talks, I think I just rambled quite a bit and hopefully I answered any, everything. If you guys have any other questions, uh, let me know in the comments below or on my website and I'll be sure to answer those. Thanks for watching, you guys take care and I'll see you on the next episode.